right, here we go. Question 14 from our pre-calculus, homework number two in my lab math. It says for this given quadratic function, they want to know first, does the graph open up or down? That is determined by the value of A. So here we can see that A is less than zero since it's negative, and that means the parabola will open down. Next part, they want the coordinates of the vertex. So we're going to need the values of A, B, and C. And then we can find the values of H and K. H is negative B over 2A, which is minus a negative 2 over 2 times negative 4. I have an odd number of negatives, which means my outcome will be negative. That's going to be 2 over 8, which reduces to 1 fourth. Once we know H, we can find K. K is F of H. So substituting into the function, we're going to get negative 4 times negative 1 fourth squared minus 2 times negative 1 fourth plus 3. And again, what a great opportunity to use our calculator. So we're going to have negative 4 times negative 1 fourth quantity squared minus 2 times negative 1 fourth plus 3 is 13 fourths. And if you remember, the ordered pair for the vertex is h comma k, which in this case is going to be negative 1 fourth, 13 fourths. Next, what is the equation of the axis of symmetry? I don't think there's any easier question after you know the vertex. The axis of symmetry is always x equal the x-coordinates of the vertex. Next part, they want the x-intercepts. So since I already have a, b, and c labeled, we're going to plug into the quadratic formula. That is negative b. b is already negative, so that makes that positive. Plus or minus the square root of b squared. Negative 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. And again, what a great opportunity to use our Casio class whiz. Inputting first the positive value, 2 plus square root of 4 minus 4 times negative 4 times 3 all over 2 times negative 4. Isn't that amazing that you can input that just the way it looks? If I hit equals, it's going to give me the answer in simplest radical form. Notice if you read the instructions here in the background, it says round to two decimal places. So on our class whiz, to force the decimal, we're going to click the SD button, and then we're going to round that to two decimal places, negative 1.15. Now, to get the other x-intercept, we're simply going to scroll back through all of the stuff we typed in. And here at the very beginning, where it says 2 plus, we're going to change that to minus and hitting the SD to force the decimal gives us our other x-intercept of 0 0.65. Those are our two x-intercepts rounded to two decimal places. Type an integer or decimal. Okay, I'm just making sure they don't want those as ordered pairs. It doesn't say as an ordered pair, so they just want the x-coordinates. Please make sure that you use the decimal and the comma appropriately. 
if you use a decimal instead of a comma or vice versa, it will screw that up. Next part, the y-intercept. Remember the y-intercept for a quadratic function is always the value of c. And again, they do not want an ordered pair. It doesn't specify ordered pair, so they just want the y-coordinates. The next part wants us to graph. So again, we're going to use our parabola tool. And if you read up here in the yellow box, they want the vertex first. So we're going to have to click where the vertex is first. All right, so I've rewritten our vertex from what we found previously. You probably should convert these fractions to decimals because if I'm looking at what it gives in the graphing tool up here, it gives decimal values. We should know that negative 1 fourth is negative 0.25. 13 fourths as a mixed number is 3 and a fourth. As a decimal, that would be 3 and a quarter, 3.25. So we need to be at negative 0.25 and up at 3.25. That's to nail down the vertex. And then to get another point on the graph, the easiest point I can think of would be the y-intercept that we've already found. All right, so all we need to do then is go to where the y-intercept is 3 and click save and we got the graph next the range of f are going to be the values that y can be looking at the graph we can see the lowest that this graph will ever go is minus infinity the highest it will ever get is the y coordinate of the vertex the y is how high so to input that in interval notation we're going to start with negative infinity. That is the lowest y can be. Up to and including. Remember the vertex is an actual point on the graph. So the maximum height would be 13 fourths as an improper fraction using a bracket because the y is included. Okay, next we need to determine where the function is increasing and decreasing. Over here in my scratch work, I have redrawn the graph to illustrate how to find these intervals. The first step is to draw the axis of symmetry. That will cut through the x-axis at a fourth. Notice on the left-hand side, this graph is increasing, and on the right-hand side, the graph is decreasing. So we can see that our increasing interval is going to be everything from negative infinity up to the x-coordinate of the vertex, where the axis of symmetry is. And decreasing will start at the x-coordinate of the vertex, and it will continue to decrease forever. Remember that your increasing and decreasing intervals don't use brackets. Always use parentheses. Increasing first. That's going to be negative infinity. up to negative one-fourth with a parenthesis and our decreasing parentheses starting at negative one-fourth to infinity and beyond and that's going to do it for this problem so if you have any questions or comments about anything that I've covered, please feel free to leave those in the comment section below, or you can text me. And thanks for watching.